Good afternoon. Now to the extra messy corner of my room because I've, well, a few weeks ago I got a new uh, shelf system for the, the stereo, I guess, and the aftermath is, well, the boxes are from stuff that I've gotten shipped to me and then the shelves and I just haven't really figured out where to put everything. But I thought I'd show you my Hackintosh. Um, this started out as a Dell Precision 380, I think. It's just an old, like, Pentium D kind of base level workstation. Um, and I got it for free and fixed it up. It had it had some motherboard problems and that were crazy, and I think I have a video about that somewhere, maybe. I don't know. Um, and I threw a cheap, cheap Core 2 Duo in it and was like, well, I don't know what to do with this computer. And then I had the idea, well, I can just make a Hackintosh out of it. That'll be fun. That'll waste some time. <laughs> uh, but making a Hackintosh out of a Core 2 Duo old ancient workstation didn't seem wonderful. Uh, so I found that uh, the Precision what was a T3400, I think. Um, was a much better motherboard, has a Intel with a X, X38 chipset in it, something like that. I think that's what it is. A lot better, a lot easier to make a Hackintosh out of it. Uh, so I decided to get one of those motherboards because it actually fits in this chassis. All I had to do was cut out some new USB ports on the back panel and, and good to go, basically. Oh, and I also had to get a new front panel because the... the uh, diagnostic lights and the front USB ports and, and the audio jacks, that whole assembly had a slightly different pinout for the ribbon cable that went between the motherboard and it. Um, and I tried to modify the original one and it just, it freaked out and it would run the fans at 100% nonstop and, and you couldn't shut it down properly. I guess, yeah, the power button's on it too. So I bought one of those, it was a couple bucks off, off of eBay. Uh, the motherboard was like $15, and it came with 4 gigs of RAM. Um, yeah, really cheap upgrade. And then for, oh, maybe 20 bucks. this was over a year ago, I got a Xeon, um, it's an LGA 771 socket, but you can buy little sticker adapters that flip two pins on the back of it, of the processor. So you can put an LG, LGA 771 processor into a 775 socket. So I did that. Um, i trying to think of what processor. I think it's a 30, 3363 or 3663. Can't remember. It's quad-core Xeon. It's the fastest thing that I could put in this. Um, at a reasonable price. I think that the next step up, the 3373 or whatever, is impossible to find. And if you do find it, it's $100 instead of 20 you know? It's no brainer. Um, ended up painting the front white, because why not? Uh, and I got a little Xeon sticker and a little Apple sticker, because you got to make it look legit, right? Um, got a DVD burner for five bucks or something like that. Um, eventually I got a cheap NVIDIA, what is it, a GT630. Um, it was the cheapest two gigabyte card I could find because I wanted to try out, um, what's it called, DaVinci Resolve. It's a video editing made by Blackmagic um, and it said, you have to have a two gigabyte video card. Like, what? That's bullshit. <laughs> so I bought one anyway, it was really cheap. Another 20 bucks, uh, but it was for work, so it was taken care of. Um, sorry, I'm moving my guitar. Anyway, I thought I'd show you the inside. I also got a little bit of extra RAM in it. I think I've got six gigs in it for now. Um, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it does what I needed to. Usually I just remote into the computer at work in the office, which is a 5K iMac, and so if I need to do some actual video editing and stuff, I either go to the office itself, or I can just remote into it and, and do it from there, or do it from here, I guess. Uh, but as for 
Photoshop and Illustrator and stuff. I just do that here at home because it's pretty convenient and I can do it at any hour of the day. <sighs> but anyway, let's uh, take a look inside. I'll try and pull it out without knocking too many things down. Some people talk shit on Dells for being Dells, but Dell business machines, if you haven't had any experience with them, are really nice, <laughs> generally. Just, and it's just the little things like this, boom, side panels off. No screws, no BS. Super quick. Um, and I really like these old BTX motherboards, because I don't know why BTX never caught on. It was really smart, I think. You've got the CPU, you've got a, a fan that goes boom right over the CPU, your north bridge right there, boom right over the north bridge, like all the air is, it's very linear, it just goes right across and right out the back, and then your video card of course, or whatever you have on the top here, is, I don't know why there's a receipt in there, that's weird, uh, <laughs> video card is flipped upside down, since the motherboard's on the up opposite side, and so if you didn't have an active video card or active cooling on your video card then all of this air is also going to pull across your video card so you can easily put a passive card in here it's still going to pull all that heat off of it it's great um, so like i said this is a t3400 motherboard squeezed into this case um, i've got two just 500 gig drives um, the main one is a what series is that Western Digital RE or whatever those are, the, the Enterprise drives. I got it cheap refurbished and then another 500 gig drive and I just have a time machine backup one-to-one -one onto the other one. Um, yeah, I've got six gigs of RAM in there somewhere, two one gig sticks and two two gig sticks. Um, I was a little afraid that I would have to replace the power supply since this was originally a Precision 380, and the power supply is a little weak, let's say, compared to the 340. But it seems to work fine. I've never had any reliability problems, and, and the the video card I have in it, like I said, is a, just a GeForce uh, 630, GT 630. So it's it's not really drawing a whole lot in the first place. It's not like a huge thirsty card. Although I did have my old uh, Radeon. 4870 in here, which is 160 watts, or maybe it's even 200 some watts. I don't remember how. It's it's an old high end card from seven years ago, and it seemed to work fine. Uh, the only reason I got this is, like I said, for the two gigs of video RAM, and then also this has a uh, HDMI out on it, which is nice to plug into my monitor. Um, so yeah, I had to. Had to replace that front panel board. Uh, you can't really see it in there. Um, and here's the here's the ribbon cable that comes from it over to the motherboard. And I just had to do that, of course, so that I could have uh, have the fans work, have the power button work, have the diagnostic light work, have I don't even know if the USB ports worked on that. Like, the pinout was completely different between the 380 and the T3400 with this cable. They even have, have, it's a cable where they block off some of the pins. And I had to drill holes in the old cable just to make it fit into the new motherboard because there was some pinout changes. I could have totally screwed it up if I was unlucky, but it seems to it seemed to work okay. It didn't break anything at the time, but I needed to replace it in the first place, so I did that. Oh, and I also had to change the front fan. Uh, I think the 380 had a three-pin fan, and I tried to weasel it into the four-pin connector in there, but since it didn't have all four pins, it, um, it didn't seem to recognize the fan, and even once I replaced the front panel connector board assembly thing, uh, that fan would still run 100% all the time, which is super annoying. Anyway, um, I'm running Yosemite on it. I think I'm still on 
10 10 3 did they make a 10 10 4 I didn't upgrade it to the last Yosemite revision and now they've got whatever that thing's called the new 10 11 out and uh, allegedly I could just upgrade it update it without a problem but I'm not gonna touch it because it was kind of hard to get this going in the first place with that video card at least um, I'm using Clover as a bootloader. It took me, once I got that card, it, nothing seemed to work right. I, I could never get it to boot reliably. It would always go to the black screen like every four or five times and then every once in a while it would just work fine. Um, and then I finally got a proper setup with Clover um, that seems to work and I just, I don't want to touch it right now. It works that's fine for me. I don't really need to have the latest version yet um, and if I do decide to upgrade I'm gonna make a one-to-one -one clone of the drive and then go about it because I'm not gonna I don't want to risk screwing it up I don't know what I did exactly to get it working perfectly I don't remember I think at the time I didn't even know exactly what I did but it works everything's fine <laughs> Um, let me show you the back here. And I guess I didn't really have to do a whole lot back here. Um, the audio jacks on the 380 motherboard uh, obviously were, were up here and they're not anymore. So I had to drill two holes for that. And then the 3400 motherboard had two extra USB ports here. Uh, so I had to cut out a little square just to have those extra USB ports fit. And then the rest is fine. Um, I've got some, oh, the wireless card, which doesn't work that great in the corner. I need to get another uh, gigabit switch in this room so that I can have this computer and that computer hooked up to a uh, gigabit. Uh, but the, the card is, it's one of those cheap eBay PCI Express to, what do they call it? Like mini PCI Express, whatever the laptop cards, wireless card sizes, I don't remember, shit, um, it's just one of those little adapters, and then I just bought a, um, Airport Extreme from a while back, it's the first, um, uh, 802.11.in Airport card, slapped it in there, works fine, of course, Yosemite is cool about having an Airport card, um, but yeah, like I said, uh, the the adapter that I bought has three jacks for antennas, but the, the card I got only has the two, the dual antennas, so I just ignore the third one. Um, but yeah, once once you throw it into this corner, it is atrocious. <laughs> uh, I sometimes only get maybe 802.11b speeds, like 10 megs a second megabits per second it's terrible especially once I throw in all this mixers and crap in the corner that that's the only place that I can put them and then a guitar laying next to it it just totally blocks off all of the wireless even though it says it has like a 90% signal apparently it's not 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 strong enough or, or something I don't know. anyway um, I suppose I could turn it on and show you the screen and show you Yosemite, but I don't think there's really any point. You'll just have to trust me, it works fine. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making this video. So, for whatever reason, I've got the mouse plugged into the front right now. I think I was moving it around. Um, so yeah, that's my, my Hackintosh and my work computer, as I like to think of it, because I often work from home and it's a lot easier to work from home instead of getting sidetracked on other crap when you have a separate computer that is dedicated to work and also school for me. You know, I shut off the monitor to my personal computer and turn this on and clear the desk and now I'm in work mode. It helps me get, get things done, I guess. I don't feel distracted by the internet, Facebook, all that crap. 
So anyway, I will pop this lid back on here. I'll show you how awesome Dell is. Stick it in there. And it's on. Seems like that should be standard, right? It's a great computer. I enjoy it a lot.